Beloved, hear the word of God. Feel the spirit. Join our service every Sunday at 10 a.m. as we connect with the word of God. See you Sunday, and to God be the glory. Sisters and brothers all in faith and in struggle, good morning. Here are your announcements for Resurrection Sunday, March 31st. Your generous contributions support the mission of Abyssinian. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to Pushpay. You can simply text ABBY to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give through Zelle, can zell us by using your bank account and the number 917-710-7933. You can, of course, mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your consistent generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. Our praying band continues to stir up the spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And the service of triumph for our beloved Abyssinian member, Dr. Marcella Maxwell, will be held this coming Friday, April the 5th. The Lynx Incorporated's final ritual will be at 9.30 a.m., followed by Delta Sigma Theta's Omega Omega service at 10.30 a.m. The service will begin at noon and will be live streamed via abyssinian.org. Throughout April, Deacon Michael Deese will lead the Monday noon Bible study on the topic, exploring the life of the ministry of Jesus Christ. See join in details and Zoom credentials on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. The second trimester of Wednesday evening virtual Bible study in April will focus on the topic, the art and ministry of service. Please see section dates and scriptures on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly prayer line each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian community as we go to God in prayer. See Zoom details and conference call details on screen now by visiting abyssinian.org. On Friday evening, April the 12th, our members Terry and Alvin Bowles will be honored at the Dance Theater of Harlem's Vision Gala at the Zickville Ballroom in New York City Center. The Abyssinian community is invited to attend this spectacular event. See information on your screen now or to purchase tickets discounted code, visit abyssinian.org. And on Thursday, April the 25th at 7, our Faith and Education Ministry in partnership with the Graduate School of Education at Fordham University will present the second installment of the Calvin Otis Butts III Distinguished Lecture Series in Faith, Education, and Social Justice. All are invited to attend a powerful conversation featuring author, scholar, and Harvard professor, Dr. Imani Perry, distinguished Princeton University professor and MSNBC commentator, Dr. Eddie Glaude, and Emmy Award-winning author, Tremaine Lee, will moderate this conversation. So we encourage you to mark your calendars for this second installment, April 25th, 7 p.m. An Abyssinian's health ministry, Let's Knit and Crochet Together group, meets the second and fourth Saturdays in the vestry from 10 until noon. 
The Abyssinian Church appreciates your ongoing support of our pantry, which services community families on Tuesday and Thursdays from 10 until 1. Help us feed those in need by donating non-perishable, unexpired food items and canned vegetables. We're asking one and all to bring your donations to the reception lobby front desk, and we thank you in advance for your generous contributions. Our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoons from 1 to 4. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. Your generous contributions support the mission of Abyssinia. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to Pushpay. You can simply text ABBY to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give through Zelle. You can Zell us by using your bank account and the number 917-710-7933. You can, of course, mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your consistent generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. Our praying band continues to stir up the spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And the service of triumph for our beloved Abyssinian member, Dr. Marcella Maxwell, will be held this coming Friday, April the 5th. The Lynx Incorporated's final ritual will be at 9.30 a.m., followed by Delta Sigma Theta's Omega Omega service at 10.30 a.m. The service will begin at noon and will be live streamed via abyssinian.org. Throughout April, Deacon Michael Deese will lead the Monday noon Bible study on the topic, exploring the life of ministry of Jesus Christ. See join in details and Zoom credentials on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. The second trimester of Wednesday evening virtual Bible study in April will focus on the topic the art and ministry of service. Please see section dates and scriptures on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly prayer line each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian community as we go to God in prayer. See Zoom details and conference call details on screen now by visiting abyssinian.org. On Friday evening, April the 12th, our members Terry and Alvin Bowles will be honored at the Dance Theater of Harlem's Vision Gala at the Zickville Ballroom in New York City Center. The Abyssinian community is invited to attend this spectacular event. See information on your screen now or to purchase tickets with a discounted code, visit abyssinian.org. And on Thursday, April the 25th at 7, our Faith and Education Ministry in partnership with the Graduate School of Education at Fordham University will present the second installment of the Calvin Otis Butts III Distinguished Lecture Series in Faith, Education, and Social Justice. All are invited to attend a powerful conversation featuring author, scholar, and Harvard professor, Dr. Imani Perry, distinguished Princeton University professor and MSNBC commentator, Dr. Eddie Glaude, and Emmy Award-winning author, Tremaine Lee, will moderate this conversation. So we encourage you to mark your calendars for this second installment, April 25th, 7 p.m. 
An Abyssinian's health ministry lets knit and crochet together group meets the second and fourth Saturdays in the vestry from 10 until noon. The Abyssinian Church appreciates your ongoing support of Our Pantry, which services community families on Tuesday and Thursdays from 10 until 1. Help us feed those in need by donating non-perishable, unexpired food items and canned vegetables. We're asking one and all to bring your donations to the reception lobby front desk, and we thank you in advance for your generous contributions. Our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoons from 1 to 4. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. Your generous contributions support the mission of Abyssinian. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to Pushpay. You can simply text ABBY to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give through Zelle. You can Zelle us by using your bank account and the number 917-710-7933. You can, of course, mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your consistent generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. Our praying band continues to stir up the spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And the service of triumph for our beloved Abyssinian member, Dr. Marcella Maxwell, will be held this coming Friday, April the 5th. The Lynx Incorporated's final ritual will be at 9.30 a.m., followed by Delta Sigma Theta's Omega Omega service at 10.30 a.m. The service will begin at noon and will be live streamed via abyssinian.org. Throughout April, Deacon Michael Deese will lead the Monday noon Bible study on the topic, exploring the life of the ministry of Jesus Christ. See join in details and Zoom credentials on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. The second trimester of Wednesday evening virtual Bible study in April will focus on the topic, the art and ministry of service. Please see section dates and scriptures on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly prayer line each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian community as we go to God in prayer. See Zoom details and conference call details on screen now by visiting abyssinian.org. Our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoons from 1 to 4. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. An Abyssinian's health ministry lets knit and crochet together group meets the second and fourth Saturdays in the vestry from 10 until noon. These are your announcements for Resurrection Sunday, and we wish you a very powerful week ahead.
Sisters and brothers, all in faith and in struggle, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. This is Resurrection Sunday. Let's put a smile on our face. Let's have a reason to rejoice. Let's find some reason to have purpose in life. We give thanks to God for yet another opportunity to gather in the house of prayer. We thank you one and all for coming this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning where we seek to worship God in spirit and in truth. The Abyssinian Church has been here, the Abyssinian Baptist Church has been here for 216 years doing the same thing, embodying the teachers of Jesus Christ in the public square. So we invite you now to settle in, sisters and brothers, as we collectively go to God in prayer and pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he taught them to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you now to stand, sisters and brothers. Turn in your hymnals to hymn number 340. Christ the Lord has risen today. Hallelujah. Let's sing collectively to the glory of God. Christ the Lord has risen today. Join in online with us as well as we lift up this grand hymn of the church.
church say amen. amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Our sisters and brothers, uh, as they continue to enter into worship, we ask now that you assume a posture of prayer as we seek to have a conversation with God on this Resurrection Sunday. We're very grateful to see one and all who have come on this day to lift up the name of Jesus. and to celebrate victory over death. At last, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? He devote a sacred head for such one as I. We come today celebrating the cross. It was at the cross where we first saw the light, and the burdens of our hearts rolled away. For it was there by faith, by faith, I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Keep that in your spirit, sisters and brothers. When searching for light, peace, go to the cross. We come praying this morning for bereaved and broken hearts within our congregation and larger community. We pray for all bereaving families, bereaved families. This Friday, this upcoming Friday, April the 5th, we will celebrate the life of our beloved golden member, Dr. Marcella M. Maxwell. Dr. Maxwell was an icon and treasure. She will the services begin at noon. Final tribute to Dr. Maxwell will begin at 9.30 with the Lynx Incorporated, which she was a longtime member, and Delta Sigma Theta sorority with their Omega Omega service at 10.30. Please pray for Vaughn Young, the grandson of Dr. Maxwell. And then pray much for Dr. Hazel Nell Dukes, her confident and longtime sister friend who is handling many of the arrangements for her services. Also, the father of Brother Jerry Watts has transitioned. Please pray for Brother Watts and his family. We await, we await word for final services. We want us this morning, sisters and brothers, to send some love virtually to our Deacon Chair, Deacon Gerald Barber, who's under the weather today, so he's not here. Let's show him some love. <laughs> Send him prayers for strength, healing, and recovery, and for his wife, who's recuperating at home as well. Continue to pray for Brother Earl Tully, who stands in the need of prayer, is facing some serious health challenges. And so we come praying for our community, our nation, and our world. On this Easter Sunday, when we give thanks and praise unto God through Christ, we also recognize war, violence, and oppression all throughout our world. And so we cannot come today giving God thanks and praise without asking God to continue to allow us to be agents of peace, love, and transformation in a dark world and to have the courage to stand with the least, the lost, the lonely right here in our community. It is Youth Sunday here, so we will hear now from some of our talented young people. Amen. Sister Beauty Hurley will come now and lead us to the throne of grace. Let the church say amen. Amen.
Abyssinian Church family, on this Resurrection Sunday, we come to the throne of grace. Dear God, as we gather on this blessed Easter Sunday, our hearts are lifted in gratitude for the wondrous gift of your resurrection that we celebrate today. We come together as a church family, humbled by the profound significance of this holy day, and filled with awe at the miraculous triumph of your Son, Jesus Christ, over death. He truly made the ultimate sacrifice at the cross on Calvary, and rose early one Sunday morning with all glory, honor, and power. For this we give you praise. God, we lift up all those in need of prayer due to illness, death of loved ones, disappointment, and heartache. For this we know there is a balm in Gilead to heal the soul. God, we thank you for our parents, teachers, preachers, and mentors who guide us and inspire us day to day. Lord, continue to bless and keep them as they do your blessed will. Grant peace to the troubled regions of our world, especially those currently torn apart by conflict. As we remember the resurrection of Jesus, we fervently pray for an end to violence, injustice, and oppression. May the power of Easter inspire us to pursue peace, reconciliation, and solidarity with our fellow brothers and sisters near and far. As we lift our voices in prayer, we also remember our leaders, both in our nation's capital and in our local communities. Grant them wisdom, perception, and compassion as they navigate the complexities of governance and seek to uphold the common good. May they be guided by the spirit of Easter, which calls us to serve one another with humility, integrity, and love. This we ask in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Let the church say amen. amen. Let's show the choir some more love, please. Now, our brother has been sitting here waiting patiently. Our young brother, Michael Ford, who's going to come forth now on the bass. We want you to show him some love. Brother Michael, you ready? You re All right. We will hear from him now.
That's Brother Michael Ford. Let's show him some more love. Well, good morning, one and all, and a blessed Resurrection Sunday to each of you. Now, before we ask all guests and visitors to stand, I need everyone to do me a favor. Move your coats if you have them. Be a good neighbor and allow someone to come. We have people outside who are still trying to get in. I see some gaps in different places where persons can be seated. So allow them to come in and experience the worship service as well. Amen? All right, that was kind of kind of quiet. So, so we want to be a good neighbor, please, sisters and brothers. For all of our friends and guests who are here today, we invite you to stand now. All of our friends and guests who come today, please stand. Please reach out and extend a, a warm, hearty welcome to all of our friends and guests who've come today Amen. to worship with us on Resurrection Sunday 2024. We're grateful for your presence today. Now, I know some did not stand, but that's okay. Everybody who is, who's here I know is not a member. But listen, we're glad. We're glad that you are here. We are grateful, and this is what we want to say before we pass the peace. My prayer and hope is that all who have come today, friends, guests, have not only come because it's Resurrection Sunday, but you come because you are in search of a place to worship, to work, to learn, to serve, and to allow the resurrection to flow through you week by week, month by month, year by year. So if you're here today, sisters and brothers, if you're online watching, we invite you to join us, to be a part of this fellowship, to be a part of this community of faith that is seeking to be a relevant expression of Jesus Christ, not only in the church, but in the world today. So we invite you to join us. When we say the doors of the church are open later, that's exactly what we mean. You are welcome to come to be a part of this fellowship, to serve God, to serve God, to love one another and to build the beloved community. Now we invite one and all to stand and to pass the peace and love of Jesus Christ.
church say amen. amen. All right, sisters and brothers, let's, let's be seated. It's important that we do that, do this every week, do this, pass the peace and the love of Jesus Christ. It's our way of building community with one another as a strong and united fellowship rooted and anchored in our love for Jesus Christ. You can find today's order of service online or the website. You can scan the QR code in the back of your pew. Your health is most important to us, sisters and brothers. Please use hand sanitizing stations uh, if necessary. We want you to know your health, your physical well-being will be our top priority. A few reports that are worth recognition and celebrating. One we want to acknowledge our deacon, Dr. Sandy Johnson, who was honored yesterday with the NAACP. Stand, Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson was honored yesterday with the NAACP. Let's celebrate her. Blessings to you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you for your service and leadership, not only in the church, but certainly in the community. You are a champion for education and justice, and we appreciate you, all that you do. Amen. Today, we want to, to celebrate the birthday of Sister Evelyn Neal. Where are you, Sister Evelyn? Where are you? There you are. Stand so people can say her birthday today. Happy birthday, Sister Evelyn. <laughs> Blessings to you. And last week, last week, I did not receive a note. I don't see her in the back now but a faithful member of this church. I'm sorry I didn't get this note. Her birthday was last week. She and her family are, are rooted in this church. Her brother-in-law gives every month from Georgia. We always call his name the Fife family. Sister Jackie Fife, happy belated birthday to you. We love you. We appreciate you. We also want to congratulate Abyssinian member, Sister Tiffany Merriweather, who shares last month on the 17th of February, she was married to Justin Jackson Giles. So we show you love. We thank all of our musicians who've come today. We give our musicians some love, please. Yeah. Sister, sister. For joining our music department today are Dr. Brandon Waddles. Yeah. Dr. Brandon. George Davey on the pipe organ, and Brant Brian Burford Fears on the piano. Piano. And then, of course, we want to celebrate our young people who will provide the meditation today, one of the meditations we'll have today. Now, sisters and brothers all, we've heard, some, we heard a very powerful prayer already from Sister Burley, a uh, beauty Hurley, and we heard from Brother Michael Ford playing the bass, Oh my goodness, weren't we inspired by Brother Justice Walker who gave us that powerful solo give us this day. And Brother Joshua Ruffin will provide the benediction later. And then, sisters and brothers all, before we come with the message for Resurrection Sunday, you will hear from five Abyssinian ambassadors. It won't be long but they will share with you through the direction of our uh, Minister for Youth, Reverend Sharice Nelson, who's been supporting them. Five of our young people will come to share in their understanding of what the resurrection means to them. This is Youth Sunday. We want to make sure that we provide a forum for, in a minute, hold on, just, just give me a few minutes. It's coming. Okay. They're already ready, sisters and brothers. And if you can stand and listen to a lot of announcements, then you certainly can listen to them come and give a message. You will hear from me, but you will also hear from our young It's critically important that they share their insights, their understanding. Be open to this, sisters and brothers. You might learn something. You might learn something to help you grow on your faith. So don't limit yourself. Open yourself up, open your heart and your spirit to hear from these young persons. We have a lot of guests who are here today. Let me say this, I say this over and over again, sisters and brothers, everyone is a VIP in God's house. Everyone. 
We thank all of our guests and friends who've come today. We welcome you. We thank you so much for coming. And we hope that you find today's services uplifting and encouraging. Uh, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, longtime champion for justice, is here. The Morials are here. We thank all of our visitors who've come today. Thank you so much for being here today. As we close uh, Women's History Month, is coming to a close. Remember now, you heard the announcement a few weeks ago, April the 12th, Friday, April the 12th, Abyssinian members Terry and Alvin Bowles will be honored at the Dance Theater of Harlem, the Visions Gala. You can go to the church website to receive more information. Now, for all who've come in the service today, we want everyone, if you're free on the night of April the 25th, that's a Thursday evening, this will be our second installment of the Dr. Calvin Otis Butts III Distinguished Lecture Series. You know, in, in December, December the 11th, we had Jelani Cobb, uh, Nicole Hannah-Jones, and Mark Lamont Hill. April 25th, we will have Harvard professor Dr. Monty Perry, distinguished pr uh, Princeton professor, MSNBC commentator, he was here last year, Dr. Eddie Glaude, and Tremaine Lee from MSNBC will be moderating the event. It's important, come sisters and brothers, be a part of this very important discussion. Dr. Glaude has been generous enough to have some free copies of his newest book, We Are the Leaders We Have Been Looking For. You want to be here. We want you to be here on April the 25th. We have a lot to discuss during this lecture. It's 70 years since Brown versus the Board of Education. How much has changed? 60 years since the Civil Rights Bill was passed. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Amen. It's been 100 years since we celebrate the birth of, James, of, of Jimmy Baldwin. A lot to discuss. It's election year, so come, be a part of this. Bring young people from our community, from Harlem, from the District 5, from all over. Come, be a part of this important lecture, the second installment. And then this coming Saturday, April the 6th at 1, all are invited to join the health ministry at a community fair taking place at the Fred Samuel Center, 669 Lenox Avenue at 144th Street. Important information around mental health. Mental health, physical and social well-being as well. Please come then on the 7th, that next Sunday, the 7th, April the 7th, the health ministry presents dental health session. Experts from NYU Dental College will be here to talk about taking care of your teeth and preventative diseases. Church offices will be closed tomorrow, April the 1st. They will reopen April the 2nd, Tuesday. And note the credit union will be closed and they will open, oh, they will close on April 2nd as well. And now, sisters and brothers all, we invite you to give. It is a time in our service where we worship God with our giving. We hope everyone in here understands that giving is an act of worship and all who are online that we give because we understand the power the goodness the consistency the love of God through Christ in our lives and so in an effort to pour back into a community an institution a house of worship that desires to transform God's people inside and out of the church we invite you to give we thank Brother Reuben Stubbs, who recently sent a very generous contribution to our faith and education ministry and the work that we do. We just called his sister-in-law's name, Sister Jackie Fife. So we thank all who continue to give to the cause of Christ. There are several ways you can give, sisters and brothers. There are cash-only envelopes for members who desire to give via cash. You can receive those envelopes from a trustee. You can also continue to give by texting Abby to 77977. You can scan the QR code in the back of your pew and you can use the tithe and offering box in the back of the sanctuary. You do not have to use an envelope. So please give sisters and brothers, please give now if you have not. For those of you who will watch later during the week online, please give. If you have been blessed by the ministry here through the years at Abyssinian Church, we invite you to give. For giving is an act of worship. 
We will pray over these offerings, sisters and brothers, and then we invite one and all to stand to sing the doxology as we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Holy One, for this day, for this day we celebrate who you are and how you function in the world. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for our courage, our commitment to pour back into your house, a house of prayer for all people. Through our gifts, dear God, we ask that you transform them, that we might be a blessing to someone in need. Not only to keep the lights on and heat and cool air and to pay, our, to pay all of those in our midst, but we want to make sure that we are a blessing to those in need. So we give of these our gifts to repay to you all that you have done for us. This is our prayer that we offer through faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, amen. Let us stand and praise God. seated. And now, sisters and brothers all, settle in as we hear from some of the young people in our fellowship. I'll call their names now. They'll come. They're asked to give a two-minute reflection. Abyssinian Youth Ambassador Mark Cole, Luke Coy, Ryan Coy, Hampton Frazier, Skylar Frazier, Basil Patterson, and Madison Thickpen Gray. We'll pray for them as they come to deliver, to deliver some brief reflections on what the resurrection means to them. Let's show them some love. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Easter Sunday. My name is... My name is Hampton Fraser, and for as long as I can remember, my sister and I have been deeply involved in the We Experience for Youth here at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. It's been a journey marked by service, growth, and a commitment to making a difference in our community. Each week, my family and I are committed to contributing to the food pantry, because we are so grateful for the blessings in our life that we are fortunate enough to share it with others. As we gather this morning, I wanted to reflect on the significance of Easter Sunday. Beyond the superficial implications of bunnies and eggs, Easter holds a profound meaning of redemption, sacrifice, and faith. It commemorates Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and his subsequent resurrection, offering believers a message of forgiveness, renewal, and eternal life. Thinking about the importance of today, a scripture from the Bible comes to mind. It comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. These words resonate with me deeply because they speak into the essence of perseverance and faith. Throughout my life, I've had some challenging moments. Yet, like many of us, I've drawn strength from Jesus Christ. Jesus has shown up in my life in moments of uncertainty. His teachings have served as a guiding light, leading me through the times of apprehension and inspiring me to keep forward, even when the path ahead seemed obscured. 
As we contemplate the significance of Easter Sunday, let us remember the sacrifice made on our behalf and find strength in the resurrection. And may we approach each day with the same determination to persevere, knowing that since he lives through us, we can overcome any obstacle. Amen. Amen. Oh, sorry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Skylar Fraser. A reason as to why I've always loved celebrating Easter is because it's the perfect time to reflect on renewal in my own life. My most arduous renewal experience to date has been this past academic year as an 11th grader. Let's say someone were to ask me to pick just one word to describe this past year. I can respond with words that one would expect from a typical 17-year-old. I can say that it's been a difficult endeavor. I could describe it as a challenge. Nevertheless, I believe that the way to best encapsulate my experience is through the word change. Yes. For instance, I saw a lot of change in my academic expectations, increased rigor of my courses, additional preparation for standardized testing, the typical adjustments that most expect during this type of year. However, I can say that I was not ready to encounter the change in my own character. As for the first time, I had to sit down and thoroughly consider who I want to be, whether that's as a student, as a member of my different communities, and even as a civilian in our broader society. For as in the blink of an eye, I will assume a lot of responsibilities as a legal adult, such as having the power to vote. And accordingly, I need to learn how to best um, exercise this important right and many more. In short, I've come to realize that I have to face a lot of changes this year. And to all of you, the reality is, is that I'm definitely afraid of change. <laughs> Yet, I believe that I am not alone because I think that in an effort to feel secure, we all as humans tend to cling on to what we know. And consequently, we refrain from putting ourselves out there, hindering crucial development in ourselves. Luckily, one of the greatest lessons that God has taught me is that life has its challenges, but for every challenge, there's, there's growth. A scripture that I like to reflect on comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Yes, Thus, the challenges we go through help us to mature and grow in our relationship with God and one another. And so I am reminded, especially today, of the invaluable importance of God's sacrifice through Jesus to humankind, a renewal of self that entailed new beginnings for all. God has taught me that we are meant to change and that he will help to develop us into better people, not only for ourselves, but for those around us. And through his guidance, I feel more ready to face these challenges, knowing that he will forever guide me through this journey. Thank you. Good morning, Abyssinian. Good morning. And happy Easter. Happy Easter. I'm uh, Basil Patterson. I'm a senior. I go to the collegiate school. Um, this Easter provokes reflection. Throughout Holy Week, we reflect on Christ's sacrifice and resurrection. We are reminded that no matter how burdened or broken we may feel, there is always hope in him. Just as Christ emerged from the grave, so too can we rise from the depths of our struggles and embrace a new life filled with his grace and redemption. I'm speaking here today as a senior, graduating senior, selecting colleges, and through Christ this Easter, I'm reinvigorated and revitalized as a academic and religious scholar Come this on. Easter. Come on. Let us embrace the message of Romans 6, 4, understanding that through baptism into his death, we are granted the opportunity to live in the fullness of his resurrection power, liberated from the chains of sin. As we navigate our journey of faith, we may continually draw strength from the profound truth that in Christ we are made new, empowered to walk victoriously in his love and grace. This Easter we are reminded that our lives 
can be revitalized through Christ at any moment if we choose. Through him alone can we be absolved of oppressive sin. As stated in Romans 6, 4, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Romans 6 tells us how to access or experience the power, favor, and blessings of God, which are freely available to us because of what Jesus did on the cross. It is the most practical chapter in the Bible on walking in victory over sin. As we reflect on today's current events, like the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, oh the Israeli-Palestinian war in Gaza and the resulting humanitarian crisis, the insurgency in Africa with the Mali War, yeah. the war in Sudan, the Russo-Ukrainian War, the gang war in Haiti right here in this hemisphere, resulting in bloodshed with innocent lives lost. We are, called, we are called on to reflect the life and death of Christ in his resurrection. He personifies the triumph of life over death, and therefore Easter is a time to celebrate hope and joy, knowing that death is not the end and that there is life beyond our earthly existence. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning and happy Easter Sunday. <laughs> My name is Madison Thicken Gray and I'm a freshman at Humanities Prep High School. Amen. Believing in Jesus helps me to navigate the world and my everyday life by understanding Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Yeah. Jesus commissioned his disciples he didn't want them to be afraid to speak to others about him. This gives me strength and power to not be afraid to tell my peers that I go to Sunday school and church on Sundays. <laughs> Therefore, I won't make it to the meetup with them. They sometimes joke, five days of school is enough, why Sundays? I'm not afraid to tell my peers that I prioritize church and my desire to get closer to God over the latest drama session. However, this can get difficult, especially when, especially when social media makes people feel like church on Sunday is a waste of a good fun day. Yeah. Even though I share how much fun I have working with kids in the nursery and how excited kids get over simple things. Oh, to be a kid again. <laughs> life, life was easy then. However, there is no going back. I look forward to knowing that Jesus is with me. I'm not embarrassed when others see me pray over my lunch. I'm not afraid to travel to get to school or travel with my friends around the city. Yes, I must be cautious, but not afraid. Right. Navigating everyday life is tough for a team. Often you feel your social life is everything. You look for likes on those apps, and of course, I love my phone. But knowing I have Jesus with me and knowing how he loves me makes my everyday decisions a little less scary, and I often pray. Amen. Amen. Sunday, Abyssinian. <laughs> Resurrection Sunday is a chance to think about hope. If we trust and follow Jesus, we have an everlasting life. But Jesus had to go through a lot. He was betrayed, tormented, and died a violent death. Yeah. The disciples felt hopeless. They were hopeless even after the woman told them that they saw an angel who told them that Jesus rose. They didn't believe the woman. 
Then Jesus came to the disciples in disguise. And according to Luke chapter 24, verse 13, the disguised Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? The disciples went from hopeless to hopeful when Jesus revealed himself to them, blessed them, and ascended to heaven. I understand what it's like to be hopeless. As a 12-year-old in middle school, you can feel hopeless a lot. Many kids face, face anxiety, depression, and discrimination. Many adults don't understand what we're going through. But God helps us. It helped me to be reminded that people prayed for me. And, and it helped me when I learned how to pray myself. When I am at church, I feel kindness. Every time somebody shows kindness, Jesus lives through them. I, I try to be kind. Me and my friends invite new students to, to lunch until they find friends of their own, so they have people to talk to. This makes me feel good because helping people makes me happy and it makes people feel like they belong. On this Resurrection Sunday, I am hopeful. Jesus gives me hope. I know that he is with me and helps me when I'm down. As the hymn says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth living just because he lives. Thank you. Now, sisters and brothers, aren't you glad you came to hear these young... Stand up one more time. Let you all stand up one more time. Show them some love one more time. That's what you need to be hearing, sisters and brothers. I certainly learned something. And our last brother, I mean, he took part of the sermon I'm going to have for today. I'm so happy. I am delighted. Thank you all. You all are wonderful. We love you. We are very proud of you. Mark Cole also delivered a very powerful homily this morning for the praying band. He's a young man in our community, so we want to thank him as well. Thank all of our young people who participated in service today. Amen. In service today. Thankful for those powerful reflections and homily. I saw parents just tipping over their seats here. Just, uh, if we can't find this in the church, where else do we expect to have this? So this is a place where we develop, we nurture, we stand with our young people so they can grow to the heights of their possibility, Chancellor Banks. We're so grateful to see you and our de first deputy mayor, Sister Sheena Wright. Thank you so much for your presence here today as well. Thank you. And now, sisters and brothers, all, we invite you to stand, and we're going to invite you to stand and turn, open your Bibles to John chapter 20, verse 18. John chapter 20, verse 18. Now, later we're going to play that. John chapter 18, oh, chapter 20, verse 18. I've got it, don't worry. John 20, 18. I'm reading from the NIV version. Here, this verse. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples, the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them, she told them that he had said, these things to her. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. We'll hear a meditation from our young people in the choir. And through these meditations, sisters and brothers, I want us to pray and reflect on this topic. The resurrection is still in progress. The resurrection is still in progress. You may be seated.
died with Christ. And I don't know if you want to be honest, have you felt that all this being crucified with Christ? Oh, pumping bad on you. Your job not doing right by you. But my God, right in between Friday and Sunday, when he went down into hell and preached him out of the gospel, somebody say hallelujah. We're happy to have this morning Deacon James McShay back in church. One of our senior deacons, we're grateful. One of our senior deacons, we're grateful to have you back in church today. Let's show the choir some love and thank them. Now, sisters and brothers all, I'm sorry you're gonna, uh, I have to do this now. But you know where we are, you know where we live. And we're gonna invite you to come back, but there are some cars that must be uh, attended to immediately. One is a Rogue LFL 2643. Please attend to your vehicle. It's just part of where we are, sisters and brothers. LFL 2643, and then a black Nissan MFV 14E, MFV 14E, and a black Mazda. JCL 1738, JCL 1738. Both of these cars, the black Nissan and the black Mazda, are between 137th and 138th on Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. Well, sisters and brothers all, I pray that you have received something from our young people. And they were powerful and from the choirs that have come today. So it is our hope that this has been a fruitful Resurrection Sunday for you thus far. So if you don't get anything else, you have something already that you've received. That you have something already. Isn't that right, Ernie? That you have something you've received. John 20, 18. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told me that he said these things to her. The resurrection is still in progress. Yeah. Let's look to God in prayer now. Holy One, we thank you for meeting us here. Give us courage now to open our eyes and our ears for the next little while, that we might hear something on this Resurrection Sunday that we can adopt in our lives. Touch us, stretch us, challenge us, we only grow when we are challenged. We seek to evolve in our faith and the application of our faith in our lives. So be with us in this moment of exploration and we'll be careful to thank you always for who you are and how the resurrection makes the difference in our lives. 
This is our prayer we offer through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Earlier this week, sisters and brothers, earlier this week, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, in the Graduate School of Journalism at Columbia University, our dear friend and our brother who's been here many times, Dr. Jelani Cobb, He's a friend of this church. Amen. Unveiled a bust of one of the most prominent black women of the 19th and 20th century, Ida B. Wells. <laughs> Ida B. Wells. For those of you who do not know that name, once you leave here, you should Google it. You should know her. You should know her story. Amen. Ida B. Wells was a powerful and compelling anti-lynching, led a powerful and compelling anti-lynching crusade. Amen. Ida B. Wells was a fearless reporter who showed up on the scene to tell painful stories about the sin of racism, yep. the sin of white supremacy, mm -hmm. the sin of lynching, and she did it when people did not even believe her. She did it when they wanted to silence her, even when she put her own life at risk. Yeah. Ida B. Wells showed up on the scene to tell the story, sisters and brothers, of what was happening in the land of the free. Ida B. Wells was a modern day Mary Magdalene. My God. Both women were of great courage. Yeah. Sister Ida told the story that too many black people in America were being lynched. And Mary Magdalene told the story thousands of years earlier that there was one black man who had been lynched through a public execution. Yeah. And she was there as an observer on the scene to tell the story. That's right. And as we close Women's Her Story Month today, March 31st, we must celebrate the women who had the courage to be fearless truth tellers, yeah. to show up on the scene, even when the brothers left the tomb. <laughs> there would, what are you trying to say, brother? This is important that we understand the context there would be no resurrection without the detailed account and the investigative reporting of our sister, Mary Magdalene. She showed up. She showed up in her grief, and she was able to tell, tell a story. Thank God for the role of women in all four Gospels. For when they show up on the scene, it makes a difference. John's account of Mary Magdalene is the most detailed of the four gospel stories of women at the tomb. But the story of Mary connecting with Jesus is seen in two parts. The early part of chapter 20 is Mary puzzled by an empty tomb. Boy, as Dr. Gary V. Simpson over at the Concord Church in Brooklyn would say, not an empty tomb, but an open tomb. Not empty possibilities, but open possibilities. An open tomb, and in the latter part of the chapter, Mary spends some time alone at the tomb while doing her investigative research and weeping. In the beginning of chapter 20, she arrives at the tomb and she seems to be perplexed that the stone had been rolled away. She runs and reports this to Peter, and as any good investigator does, she offers a rationale of the situation. Someone, somewhere, has taken Jesus' body out of the tomb, and it cannot be found. The world could not make sense of any tomb that is being empty other than somebody robbing it. That's right. They thought the only way that Jesus to be removed was for somebody to rob his body. 
But a little later in the chapter, in the scene, in her investigative role, Mary examines the tomb. It is there she is greeted by two angels who say to her, woman, why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Mary's answer reflects her initial announcement to Peter, the beloved disciple, earlier in chapter 20. When Mary speaks, it is not based on her confusion. It is not based on anything other than her reflection and her pain, her personal grief, her grief. You feel, you see, you observe differently when you're in pain. You see people differently when you're struggling and your heart is broken. Mary believed that death and grief share the very last word in this account. And the expectation was dead. She came to honor the spirit of Jesus. She took wallowing for granted. She accepted the judgment of all nature that she had on her side, and she only knew grief. She was called out from heaviness of the circumstance. Mary turns to answer the angel, and Jesus was there, but Mary was so overwhelmed with grief that she didn't even recognize Jesus. There's a lesson here that, that Mary teaches us, sisters and brothers, even in your low moments. Never allow the darkness and despair of your situation to prevent you from seeing Jesus. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, don't allow yourself to get so low that you can't see Jesus. But amidst her grief, Jesus speaks to her. Sister, woman, who are you looking for? This is the first response that Jesus made since he rose. What's interesting is the first words that Jesus offered Mary Magdalene are similar to the words he used, he uttered at the beginning of his ministry. When the followers of John the Baptist approached Jesus and asked him, what are you looking for? Yeah. He ends the same way he begins. He starts over. What are you looking for? One of the critical lessons that John in this text reveals to us as Christ followers is that we should always look for Jesus. I've said this before and it's worth being repeated. You need to look for God in your low moments. Look for God in your struggles. Look for God in your grief. Look for God in your tears. Look for God in your challenges. Look for God when you stand alone at an empty tomb, at an open tomb. Look for God. Jesus calling out the name Mary that she knew so well. But this is, sisters and brothers, the turning point of human hope, the source of joy in the world. Because finally, there is a breakthrough in daring hope by the living hope of Jesus. God called Mary and shook her from her loose grief. But she saw something in him, resurrected despite his state, sanctioned, lynching in a broad public view, there came an end to fear and dashing hope, boldness, courage, and a sense of security and joy unlike ever known to humankind. Because of Mary Magdalene's investigative nature, she helps to reveal to us, sisters and brothers, that resurrection and Easter is not just a holiday on a calendar. Resurrection is a day of radical new beginnings. When she hears from Jesus, she no longer sees the empty as a manifestation of death, but an open tomb as the testimony of power and possibilities in life. She saw power and possibilities. Easter Resurrection is a glaring reminder that the resurrection is still in progress within us. 
This day, we come gathered together, and there's so many people downstairs who are listening to this. It is an opportunity to shake off our shackles new and take on a new identity in our lives if we're open to it. If we're open to it. The resurrection can revive our spirits, as was the case of the investigation of Mary Magdalene. And it can change us so deeply, sisters and brothers, that we begin to live differently and engage with one another differently. If we're careful, the resurrection can transform us to the extent that we show up differently in the world. And we can engage one another inside the church and outside the church with more love. Ah, there's that word again, love. More unity, more compassion. When the resurrection is working within us, we become less reserved about caring for other people. Did you hear me, sisters and brothers? Don't get too far. If I know you want to get to brunch and I know you want to get to your family and have a good time, I see some of us. But think about it for a minute. If the resurrection lives within us, the process of the resurrection is still flowing and moving within us, then we become less reserved about caring for everybody else in the world. We'll be more committed to it. The resurrection is still in progress because it can help us not be so afraid of caring for others, for showing compassion and love, and it can lead us to overcome fear and shame. How do we know the resurrection is still in progress? Because like Mary, sisters and brothers, we too have seen the Lord. Like Mary, we too have seen the Lord. The Lord, we may not have seen high and lifted up. We may have seen the Lord right here in Harlem. But we've seen the Lord operating in our lives and engaged in our dilemmas. We've seen the Lord function. function. Resurrection is an indication that we are holders. We hold on to defiant hope in the face of imminent death. Christ is the one who holds the future. Our hope is not limited to the power of persons, sisters and brothers. Our future is in the hands of Jesus Christ. Today, we are reminded that God does wonderful things, that the resurrection is still in progress as God takes broken pieces and makes them whole again. God shows up when all hope seems lost. God is in the business of pursuing lost causes. God seeks out the most afflicted, the most wounded, the most marginalized and cast out in society. We know the resurrection is still in progress, sisters and brothers, because God's resurrection power will enable us to heal broken relationships in our family, in our church, in our community, on our job, God enables us to heal fractured division relationships in our lives. That is the function of the resurrection at work in us. But how is the resurrection at work in you, sisters and brothers? Who is benefiting? I want everybody here to think about this. Who is benefiting from Christ being at work in you? Who is benefiting from Christ being a part of your life, living within you? God talks to us. Even in this moment, sister, when we're here, when we're listening, when we heard from the young people, we heard from the choir. Even in this moment, we sit and some of us are telling God what needs to be resurrected in our lives. But if we're careful and whisper, God is telling us what needs to be resurrected in us. There's a big difference. We come to church, we're asking God, Lord, this and this in my life, that in my life needs to be resurrected. But if you're listening, you're open, God tells us what needs to be resurrected within. Within our lives, within our cities, within our country, and within the world. This Resurrection Sunday, sisters and brothers, let us be assured that the resurrected Christ intercedes on our behalf. Regardless of our differences, regardless of the past mistakes we have made, regardless 
of our grief and our pain. When you leave here today, I want everyone in here to know that all of us have an assignment. Everyone in here has an assignment, and that is to allow the resurrection to be at work in you. Everyone, I don't care how you do it, but you've got to find a creative way to allow the resurrection to function in your life, not only till you get to spring 2025 and Easter comes again, but every day, day. how will the resurrection show up in your life? We want you to know that we are clear reminders that Christ is neither afraid or dismissive of our differences or our mistakes. And none of us here who come with our pain and our sorrow and our grief and our burdens and our obstacles have to struggle alone. We need not feel defeat in any aspects of our lives. The resurrection is a demonstration in life that we can never be defeated. Now, I need you to hear me. I need you to really hear me on that, sisters and brothers, because that is a fact is the essence of this message, that the resurrection, if it is alive in you, I don't care what you go through, what type of report you get, if you lose your job, you go through a divorce, you have a loved one die, it does not matter. You can never, folks, talk about you, defame your name, nail you to a cross, it doesn't matter. Because the resurrection is alive and at work in you, you can never be defeated. You can never be defeated. Why is that? Because truth crossed the earth. It will rise again. There is no defeat in life, sisters and brothers. Even in death, there is no defeat. And so I'm glad that there are two black women, Mary Magdalene and Ida B. Wells, two two righteous, investigative journalist who showed up on the scenes and had the courage to tell the story. Ida B. Wells said too many black men are being lynched in New Jerusalem of America. And Mary Magdalene said, oh, but wait a minute, flag on the play again. I know a black man that was lynched in the old Jerusalem, but I had the courage to go to the scene And I saw the Lord for myself. I have seen the Lord. This is the first sermon for Easter and for resurrection given by Mary. I have seen the Lord. That's the first sermon after resurrection. I have seen the Lord. This is the core of our resurrection message. Her confusion and her sadness had had been transformed by her encounter with Jesus. No more dying, no more grief, but an everlasting confidence to live and to love boldly amidst injustice and oppression. To stand in rebellion against sinful injustice. So thank God, sisters and brothers, for Mary Magdalene and thank God for Ida B. Wells, who said with conviction, I've seen the Lord. I've seen the Lord, and the Lord is raised from the grave. Aren't you glad, sisters and brothers, that he rose? And because he rose, we can rise too. Because he rose, we can rise too. I told you the brother told him, stole my message earlier, young brother. Because he rose, we can rise too. Aren't you glad we can rise? And we can rise and we can strive to work. We can rise above defeat. We can rise above darkness and chaos. We can rise above racism and sexism and all other type phobias in this world. We can rise above pettiness. We can rise above gossip. We can rise above laziness and contentment. We can rise above helplessness. We can rise above jealousy. We can rise above envy. We can rise from arrogance and ignorance. We can rise above our ability to not forgive. We can rise. Lord, let your resurrection power be demonstrated in my life every day. So my life may be a reflection of the resurrection showing up in me. 
that I just don't come to church on a Sunday in the springtime and put on a nice outfit. But I come to church because I realize that something within me has been transformed because he's made the difference. So today, sisters and brothers, it is a reminder that the resurrection is still in progress within us. For the God that we worship, the Christ that we embody, is the same God who holds the future today, tomorrow, and forever. That's why we sing with conviction and because he lives. That's what the brother says, I can face all of my tomorrows. And because he lives, all of my fear, all of my anxiety, all of my grief, all of my heartbreak, all of my pain can be gone. And because I know without a shadow of a doubt that he holds the future, no matter what hell I'm going through, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Take that with you, sisters and brothers. Allow the resurrection to live within you. No matter what happens, always remember that the resurrection is still in process. The doors of the church are open. Let's stand and sing. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. All my fear is gone. The doors are open for you. Because I know he holds the future. And life Let's sing collectively because he lives. community of faith gathering, gathering around an open tomb to share in our belief of God through Christ and the resurrection at work in us. And if you're seeking a place to work, to serve, we invite you to come. We'll sing that chorus one more time. And if you don't want to walk down the aisle, you can simply send us an email to member at abyssinian.org, member at abyssinian.org. And we'll be glad to welcome you in part of this fellowship. 
We'll sing one more time to the glory of God. I can think. sisters and brothers. We again thank you for coming on this Resurrection Sunday 2024. Please again show all of our young people who participated in today's worship some love and encouragement. If you would come in at the end of, uh, before the, the uh, preached word, we had several young peoples who spoke to us today and provided powerful messages to us, but just one or two announcements before we depart. Remember Dr. Marcella Maxwell's funeral next Friday at noon. Uh, the Lynx will present their final ritual at 9.30 and the Delta Sigma Theta Omega Omega service is at 10.30. One of our members, one of our longtime members, Hassani Andrew Pratz uh, has been here for a while, is now uh, one of the first, the first, let me make sure I have this right, Hassani. Hassani Pratz is now a regent for the state of New York, representing the second judicial district in Brooklyn. And she was elected this month by the New York State Assembly in a joint resolution. She's the first black, black person to hold this position for Brooklyn. Hassani Andrew Pratt, stand up so everyone can see you. Let's celebrate you. We celebrate all of our members who are doing glorious things and continue to carry forth the light of Jesus Christ in the world. And now, sisters and brothers, all, we look to see most of you, all, if not all of you, next Sunday. <laughs> I'll tell you why, because we celebrate the resurrection in, in us each week. Amen. And so we invite you to come back, Amen. be a part of this fellowship, keep coming. If you were inspired today, we invite you to come. You don't need to be living in a place like New York without having a church to come to. You don't need to be living anywhere in the world, but particularly in the concrete jungle. You need a community to be a part of. So we want you to think very hard about that. Come and join us in our fellow, all of our visitors and guests, we thank you for coming today. And now we will have our benediction. We invite one and all to stand. And while he's coming, I wanna make sure that we pray much for one of our deacons, Deacon Cecilia Small, who has not been able to come to church in several months. Amen. Please pray for Deacon Small and her husband, Deacon Charles Small. Amen. 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 Good morning, brothers and sisters. All right. I won't be too long because I know you guys want to get on your way. So <laughs> I just want to say I was truly inspired by this Easter Sunday and uh, especially by the future generation here that's gonna be our leaders. So, now family, um, let us bow our heads in prayer. God, we are gathered here today in commemoration and celebration of the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. He who gave up his life for our sins he who gave up his life for our spiritual cleansing and rebirth. Praise be to the Almighty who has brought us thus far on the way and by thy might has led us into the light. Despite life's complications, your word reminds us to not worry about anything, but instead pray and ask you, God, for everything we need 
while always giving thanks. And you, God, the God of our weary years and our silent years, will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Yeah.
Your generous contributions support the mission of Abyssinia. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can simply text ABBY to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give through Zelle. You can Zelle us by using your bank account and the number 917-710-7933. You can, of course, mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your consistent generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. Our praying band continues to stir up the spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And the service of triumph for our beloved Abyssinian member, Dr. Marcella Maxwell, will be held this coming Friday, April the 5th. The Lynx Incorporated's final ritual will be at 9.30 a.m., followed by Delta Sigma Theta's Omega Omega service at 10.30 a.m. The service will begin at noon and will be live streamed via abyssinian.org. Throughout April, Deacon Michael Deese will lead the Monday noon Bible study on the topic, exploring the life of the ministry of Jesus Christ. See join in details and Zoom credentials on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. The second trimester of Wednesday evening virtual Bible study in April will focus on the topic, the art and ministry of service. Please see section dates and scriptures on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly prayer line each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian community as we go to God in prayer. See Zoom details and conference call details on screen now by visiting abyssinian.org. On Friday evening, April the 12th, our members Terry and Alvin Bowles will be honored at the Dance Theater of Harlem's Vision Gala at the Zickfield Ballroom in New York City Center. The Abyssinian community is invited to attend this spectacular event. See information on your screen now or to purchase tickets discounted code, visit abyssinian.org. And on Thursday, April the 25th at 7, our Faith and Education Ministry in partnership with the Graduate School of Education at Fordham University will present the second installment of the Calvin Otis Butts III Distinguished Lecture Series in Faith, Education, and Social Justice. All are invited to attend a powerful conversation featuring author, scholar, and Harvard professor, Dr. Imani Perry, distinguished Princeton University professor and MSNBC commentator, Dr. Eddie Glaude, and Emmy Award-winning author, Tremaine Lee, will moderate this conversation. So we encourage you to mark your calendars for this second installment, April 25th, 7 p.m. An Abyssinian's health ministry, Let's Knit and Crochet Together group, meets the second and fourth Saturdays in the vestry from 10 until noon. The Abyssinian Church appreciates your ongoing support of our pantry, which services community families on Tuesday and Thursdays from 10 until 1. Help us feed those in need by donating non-perishable, unexpired food items and canned vegetables. We're asking one and all to bring your donations to the reception lobby front desk, and we thank you in advance for your generous contributions. Our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only 
Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoons from 1 to 4. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. Your generous contributions support the mission of Abyssinian. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to Pushpay. You can simply text ABBY to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give through Zelle. You can Zelle us by using your bank account and the number 917-710-7933. You can, of course, mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your consistent generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. Our praying band continues to stir up the spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And the service of triumph for our beloved Abyssinian member, Dr. Marcella Maxwell, will be held this coming Friday, April the 5th. The Lynx Incorporated's final ritual will be at 9.30 a.m., followed by Delta Sigma Theta's Omega Omega service at 10.30 a.m. The service will begin at noon and will be live streamed via abyssinian.org. Throughout April, Deacon Michael Deese will lead the Monday noon Bible study on the topic, exploring the life of ministry of Jesus Christ. See join in details and Zoom credentials on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. The second trimester of Wednesday evening virtual Bible study in April will focus on the topic, the art and ministry of service. Please see section dates and scriptures on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly prayer line each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian community as we go to God in prayer. See Zoom details and conference call details on screen now by visiting abyssinian.org. On Friday evening, April the 12th, our members Terry and Alvin Bowles will be honored at the Dance Theater of Harlem's Vision Gala at the Zickville Ballroom in New York City Center. The Abyssinian community is invited to attend this spectacular event. See information on your screen now or to purchase tickets discounted code, visit abyssinian.org. And on Thursday, April the 25th at 7, our Faith and Education Ministry in partnership with the Graduate School of Education at Fordham University will present the second installment of the Calvin Otis Butts III Distinguished Lecture Series in Faith, Education, and Social Justice. All are invited to attend a powerful conversation featuring author, scholar, and Harvard professor, Dr. Imani Perry, distinguished Princeton University professor and MSNBC commentator, Dr. Eddie Glaude, and Emmy Award-winning author, Tremaine Lee, will moderate this conversation. So we encourage you to mark your calendars for this second installment, April 25th, 7 p.m. An Abyssinian's health ministry lets knit and crochet together group meets the second and fourth Saturdays in the vestry from 10 until noon. The Abyssinian Church appreciates your ongoing support of our pantry, which services community families on Tuesday and Thursdays from 10 until 1. Help us feed those in need by donating non-perishable, unexpired food items and canned vegetables. We're asking one and all to bring your donations to the reception lobby front desk 
and we thank you in advance for your generous contributions. Our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoons from 1 to 4. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen by visiting abyssinian.org. Your generous contributions support the mission of Abyssinian. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to Pushpay. You can simply text ABBY to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give through Zelle. You can Zelle us by using your bank account and the number 917-710-7933. You can, of course, mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your consistent generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. Our praying band continues to stir up the spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And the service of triumph for our beloved Abyssinian member, Dr. Marcella Maxwell, will be held this coming Friday, April the 5th. The Lynx Incorporated's final ritual will be at 9.30 a.m., followed by Delta Sigma Theta's Omega Omega service at 10.30 a.m. The service will begin at noon and will be live streamed via abyssinian.org. These are your announcements for Resurrection Sunday, and we wish you a very powerful week ahead.